What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mask and Health Solutions Podcast, where I got a fellow PEer who's made gains in the departments that we're always looking to, you know, learn more about and make gains in because I don't know about you guys, but I like making gains when it comes to PE, <laughs> which is why I like picking the brains of other fellow PEers that know, you know, their way around the block and know how to make said gains, right? And today we have the privilege of talking to none other than Voyeur of Bliss, aka VOB. First and foremost, how are you today, man? I'm doing great. It's good to be here and meet you. Hey, man. It is fantastic to get you talking and getting your story out there because that's kind of one of the biggest things that I think is always missing as far as PE. It's kind of like a long format. Like, I know I found you on the forums, and I'm always looking to learn, so I'm always doing a lot of digging. But it's always nice to just sit down and have a conversation. So the first thing I want to hit you with, man, is what got you started in PE, first of all? Well, it was kind of an interesting situation. A lot of guys are more interested in just getting bigger to get bigger. Mm -hmm. Where for me, it was a painful situation I was trying to deal with. And I didn't really know a whole lot about uh, a guy being in pain during sex. I've heard women have pain before as well, but what's a guy supposed to do? Who do you go and talk to about that? (laughs) And I was kind of confused. I didn't really know how anatomy worked and all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of on my own. I got married. And it was getting more sexually active and I didn't really know what to do about pain and that kind of stuff. Talk with my wife about it. She didn't really know exactly how the anatomy and stuff work. So she was my partner in learning stuff uh, about sexuality altogether, how anatomy works, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And what was that pain coming from? Was it like Peyronie's or like what, so what was it exactly? When I mentioned it to my doctor, that's what they said it might be. But as I learned the anatomy, uh, there's a ligament that holds the the penis to the body so it doesn't doesn't flop between your legs. You can imagine you stand oh, up, your dick okay. doesn't point straight down. Yeah. And there's a ligament <laughs> that holds it up that keeps it from flopping down like that. Yeah. And if you go and you talk to doctors about um, enhancement through surgery, a lot of times that's what they do is they cut that ligament. That yeah, suspensory dick, ligament, right? Straight down. And the problem was is that's where my pain was coming from is wow. when I would have sex, I had an upright angle. Yeah. And when we would do missionary position, you can imagine if you're real close to your partner, close face to face, you try and lean back, you, you go to more where your two bodies are perpendicular. Mm-hmm. That's going to put a lot of strain on that ligament if it's not very flexible. And I just wasn't flexible at all. I've talked with guys where they say they can only get the tip of their dick a few inches off their stomach. They're so upright that basically on a clock, they're like one o'clock or two o'clock and then they can't go down further than that. Yeah. And when I talk with some guys, they're like, yeah, we're similar. So I heard about, uh, you know, going to the doctor and getting it snipped. And I was like, oh, no, that's scary. I don't think I can handle that. I don't want to pay for that. It, but is there anything else I can do about it? So I started researching flexibility. If a gymnast were to have the same problem, how would a gymnast tackle this? They're like experts at being stretchy and flexibility and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I spent a while learning, how do you stretch a ligament? How do you stretch something in your body that needs to be more flexible that causes you pain? So it's a a long process. It just takes a while. You got to have patience with it. Just do a little bit each day, Um, deal with a little bit of discomfort, but you don't want to have pain. So I just started doing that every day or every other day. I do a little bit of stretching and uh and about a year and a half of doing this uh, repeatedly through the week I, I got to the point where i would start to not have any pain during sex i was really excited about it and i didn't even pay attention that oh look my measurement for how long my dick was so that was actually getting longer it was just kind of a side effect of it as you get more flexible you hear guys talk about doing pe all the time they're stretching their ligaments in different directions well i was only concerned with the one direction so I got lucky that I got a little bit of gains from that one direction. So after about a year and a half, I got like an inch and a half of measured length that was there already. It's not like I grew it any. It just Mm -hmm. was more flexible and I could actually use it properly. And some guys that might be listening to this, they might not understand what the crap I'm talking about because they've never had a tight ligament before. Mm -hmm. But I can guarantee you there's hundreds, thousands of guys out there that have the same problem. They come out of the word work when I start talking about this issue. So yeah. after about a year and a half, I gained about an inch and a half, and I was super confident. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm starting to try some new uh, positions with my wife and stuff like that. And then one day I got too confident, and I felt that that pain of 
of something happened, something you didn't do right. Like, you know, you try and yeah. do the splits or whatever and you're like, Oh crap, <laughs> I'm going to be feeling this for a while. And that's exactly what it was. I got too confident and I was like, Oh, hammer down. Got to get back to doing this again. Yeah. So I went back and just kept continuing to improve. And part of what I did is it got kind of difficult for me to do it with my hands. So I was researching how other guys did it. They use all sorts of tools. You see guy doing mm -hmm. bag hangers and all sorts of tools that you can wear during the day. So I was like, well, what can I do to basically focus on that one thing? Mm -hmm. And that's where I started using the steel cock rings and the ropes to just aid in what I was doing. I'm not doing anything different than, you know, just grabbing that spot where you want to stretch it and replacing it with a ring. And I would put the, put the rope around my ankle so I could gently pull on it pretty much mm -hmm. the same as I did with my hands, continued to do that for another year and got another inch and uh, measured length and even more flexibility. So now I'm to the point where I feel like I'm normal and I can have sex like a normal guy without <laughs> feeling dick pain anymore, but I'm aware of it. I like, I know that there's limitations to angles and stuff. When you've got a chick riding up you, you got to be aware that you don't want her to slip out or yeah. to bend your dick in the wrong way, all that kind of stuff. All, because I've went through all this struggle, I'm a little bit more aware of what's going on. So I'm a little <laughs> bit more cautious about it. I'll and say it's, so. It served me well to be cautious. And it, it's also being, besides being cautious of hurting me, mm -hmm. is I don't want to hurt other women as well. Now I've got over another extra inch of depth I can go. You don't want to be smashing a woman in her cervix or something if that's not what she wants. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm going to paying attention to taking care of me and taking care of her. And those are just all skills that guys in PE should be aware of. Once mm -hmm. you start into this process of improving yourself, it comes with the responsibility of taking care of yourself, but taking care of the other people you interact with. A hundred percent, man. I mean, <clears throat> this is why I love, you know, having these long in-depth conversations in regards to PE. Because I find that everybody's story is just so fascinating, man. Like, everybody has a different starting point, you know, whether it's kind of like, usually pain is kind of the biggest thing that spurs us. And for a lot of guys, including myself, it was just ego. You know, it's kind of like, hey, hurtful comment came my way. I'm like, oh, out of spite, I got to figure something out. And I did. But in your case, and another gentleman I just talked to, too, he started because of payronies. So he was not looking like, like most guys, like, oh, I'm looking to make gains just to, for the sake of making gains. It was more like... Hey, I got to discover my body. And it's, it's interesting because like not a, a result of that was, Hey, you learned how to increase the size, you know, which a lot of us are looking for. So it's very interesting to me that, you know, your starting point is what spurred you into the direction that it did and helped you made the length gains that you've made thus far. But I mean, one thing that I kind of want to go back to right now, cause you mentioned that sometimes like, let's say if you don't keep up with your regimen, you still get pain. Do you think that would still happen now? Even years of, I'm assuming after years of being at this. That's a good point. And uh, I've been asked that before is and what I go back to my original length or my original unflexibility. And yeah, for sure. That could probably happen if I didn't use my new angle at least once a week. Like you can mm -hmm. imagine for a gymnast, if they don't do the splits, you know, at least once a week, and they're going to lose that ability over time. Mm -hmm. But you got to compare that to, you know, how extreme do you really have to do? Do you really have to to put on everything and do a full day of stretching? Or mm -hmm. are you just exercising the angle that you have during normal sex? Yeah. So like now that it's normal for me to have sex like a normal guy, like it's it's weird for me to say that, that having sex <laughs> like a normal guy, not worrying about pain in your dick or angle and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now that I enjoy that, I want to enjoy it every single week. So for <laughs> my particular situation, it's not really a big deal for upkeep. Mm -hmm. And and part of what I enjoy, and I'm sure some guys can relate to this, is stretching yourself out, making sure you're using your dick several times a week or once a week or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. is just gives you a little bit of self-confidence and happiness. So that's part of what makes sure that I'm not going to lose anything. Very interesting. Because... <clears throat> It's almost like a maintenance routine because I did go through some of myself where, you know, I was getting ready for the bodybuilding competition. And like I said on the podcast, you know, I lost some gains because of it in the length department just because I wasn't able to keep up. And basically, I just, you know, I took a long, long time off and I'm like, oh, wow, I lost gains, man. This kind of sucks, <laughs> which is why I kind of went back to hanging. Right. And it's interesting because I think um, 
like from my perspective, it's like I'm guessing the suspensory ligament might have been super taut and then you just kind of doing it. It's almost like, man, you should rebrand it as yoga for your, your cock or something, man. Like, <laughs> it's, Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what it is because that's what people talk about, how yoga is good for all sorts of your body. And even today, I'm only starting to learn more about stretching the rest of my body. The mm-hmm. I mentioned the splits because I'm learning to do the splits right now. I've never nice. considered that. Like in all the different muscles in my body, I've never really focused on stretching. And a lot of people consider getting more flexible a form of bodybuilding because you're shredding your muscles apart and something's got to change in that process. So I'm technically doing a little bit of bodybuilding right now to get more flexible in my legs and hips and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude, because... I mean, that's the whole purpose of yoga. It's kind of like you always want to increase that range of motion just a little bit more. And if you look at some of the best like professional bodybuilders, like back in the day, Ronnie Coleman weighed about 300 pounds, pure lean muscle on stage. The man was an absolute freak, but he could do the splits like nobody's business, right? And this actually is a a form of training that was made by a dude named Hanny Rambod. It's called FST7, and it's called fascia stretch training, and then seven, because that's kind of like the burnout says you do at the end. But it kind of follows the same principles as like, you know, in the erect penis, it stretches out and then you want to pump it with as much muscle as possible. So what you would do is do a working set, then you would flex for 30 seconds and then stretch it out for 30 seconds, right? And that would lead to overall growth. And again, Hanny Rombaud is one of these guys. He trained Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, um, Andre Do it like he the guy's like super renowned, right? And now you take that principle to PE and it seems like you found a way to kind of just master that and make it work for you. The other question I had, have you um, done pumping or anything else or you just kind of like stick more with like the stretching exercises? So, yeah, I get asked that a lot if I've ever tried that. And I've never specifically done any sort of pumping, but it kind of depends on what your definition of what pumping is. Mm -hmm. So when I was young, I didn't really know a lot about sex or masturbation, any of that kind of stuff. Like I first learned about myself because I would edge myself not knowing what I was doing. (laughs) <laughs> so like I would do that kind of stuff, not realizing what I was doing. But then as I've gotten older, I realize, well, I've been training my Kegel muscles. I've been training blood flow and stamina my whole mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Like there are benefits behind that. And mm-hmm. part of how I've managed to stay with the hardness that I have, the thickness that I have is because I do those kind of things. And I maintain doing that through the cycle of stretching my ligament uh, at the same time I did that I also did bodybuilding and, and losing a lot of body fat at the same time I would continue to do the edging and practicing getting my erection as large as I can as well as maintaining it for a longer amount of time to simulate what I would want to do for sex if I want to have sex with an erection that lasts a long time then I should practice doing those specific things mm-hmm. instead of just you know getting it over with yeah so by doing that over the years it's a kind of uh, it's what i attribute to what thickness that i do have that's why i have it is i do pumping on my own using my own kegel muscles using my own body using my own heart by having a stronger heart by going and getting more fit losing body fat practicing high intensity training doing that kind of stuff it takes less number of heartbeats to get that amount of blood that I need into my cock. And then it's trivial to keep that blood there Mm -hmm. or replenishment, depending on on what I'm doing. So as I'm going through making gains, losing my body fat, revealing more of what's available by losing that fat that's around the base of my cock, Mm -hmm. it's what appeared happened to be thicker and useful for what I was looking for. A hundred percent agree with you, man, because I mean, that's my whole thing. And, and as a trainer, it's kind of like, you know, I'll get guys that kind of like tap me on the shoulder like, bro, man, I think my dick got bigger. And I'm like, I think it might have, but I think it might have been that size the whole time. And what you did was improve circulation, right? And that's the, the beauty of getting more fit is that when you shed that body fat off, right? And a lot of guys that are like, you know, 15 to 20% body fat, when they get down to like, you know, 15, 10, you can really see a notable, noticeable change, especially when you get rid of that fat mound, like you mentioned too. It's like, hey man, it even makes it look longer because it's kind of like, yo, that fat has, has gone down, right? And in doing that, it, it kind of, it totally changes everything. And to your point too, with the circulation, and it's kind of like, hey, that's a natural way to obviously get it more pumped, <laughs> you know? When your heart is working better, you know, the internal work and the circulation, all that stuff is working in tandem. That's one of the things that I think is found foundational when it comes to PE. 
And it's one of the things that I hate hearing about where guys are looking for supplements to improve circulation where I'm like, bro, uh, do you drink? You know, are you 40 pounds overweight? It's like, maybe we should start off there first. Yeah. And people ask me about cock rings and some guys use cock rings either as prescribed by a doctor mm -hmm. to use it to restrict or do certain things. And a lot of guys think that the purpose of cock rings is to trap the blood in the penis. And that kind of it could work depending on what type of disease or issue you're dealing with, but it mm -hmm. doesn't benefit the natural anatomy. Your veins and how they work, restricting and increasing blood flow to your cock need to function properly. And mm -hmm. if you don't train those specifically to get the blood into your cock, the cock ring is not going to have anything to work with. Mm -hmm. So when people see that I wear a cock ring or I enjoy it, they ask, do I wear it tight enough to make an improvement or is that part of my improvements? And it's, it's not at all. It's more personal preference. That's one thing. I just like how it feels. And two, I used it as a tool to stretch my ligament. Mm -hmm. Three, yes, it, sometimes it can look nice or feel nice, but that's, a, you know, that's an extra thing. It's not about trying to trap blood or modify a whole lot to make a game. Mm -hmm. Now, even though I said that and, and that I, do, I don't like to wear a restrictive cock ring, you can still modify the characteristics of blood flow coming in and out of your cock by what cock ring or sex toy that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the things that my wife says she loves about when I wear a cock ring is the dynamics of increasing and decreasing of hardness during sex is changed from the cock ring. So normally you think that a woman, she's got a lot of muscles down there. She mm -hmm. can very easily overpower the amount of hardness you have if given enough time you know maybe not immediately she's going to be able to feel your hardness right away but if you give her a couple seconds or a couple minutes or longer than that she's going to be able to squish some of that blood out of your cock mm -hmm. and it's it's fighting against your your natural arteries and veins replenishing that or restricting the blood coming out well if you have a cock ring on at the same time all you're doing is just supplementing it a little bit you reduce her ability to squeeze it out. So she feels like I'm a lot harder and thicker when I wear a cock ring. And the reason for that is she's just not reducing my size. When we first start having sex, my cock stays exactly as thick as it was right after foreplay for the first couple of minutes of sex. And, and some women, they like the size of a large glands. Mm -hmm. And that's very apparent if you wear a cock ring, you may have noticed that your glands may shrink in size while you're doing things with a partner. You wear a cock ring, it's going to reduce less. But you can do the same thing if, during foreplay or during hand jobs or whatever by just using your hands. You may notice that if you put your thumb at the base of your cock and the crook right underneath your belly button, you'll notice that that may increase your hardness a little bit. And that's just because you're reducing the blood coming out of your cock, out of your glands. And depending on how your anatomy is, that might be more effective or not very much. We don't really use that. My wife and I, we don't use that technique a lot, but I notice when I put my cock ring on, it does make that effect. I have one cock ring that's kind of flat on the top. It mm -hmm. pushes on me a little bit more right there. I noticed that for sure. As soon as I put it on, it, it can be agitating after a while, but it's a cool trick to have in my bag. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we're always looking to in improve performance around here. And it's very interesting too, because um, <clears throat> I had uh, Dr. Justin Elliott on the show and he actually designed um, a tech cock ring, I guess, so to speak. It's called Firm Tech. And uh, it actually tracks your nocturnal erections and does a whole bunch of different things. But another model that he has specifically for sexual performance, and he was saying the exact same thing and why it's so important and the difference it can make, right? Because when you do wear it, the rigidity of your cock feels completely different, right? And that's kind of one of those things. It's kind of like, especially for guys that suffer with like, hey, you know what, erectile quality and stuff, you know, it's like, hey, everybody's in a different boat. And to your point, too, about human anatomy, we're all different, man. We're all completely different. And for some guys, it's, it's one of those things where, hey, maybe just doing PU is good enough. And for other guys, it's kind of like you can use this as an extra tool is the way I see it. Right. And I think it's wonderful because it's one of those things that, hey, if you can pull it out and why not? And I, I've never met, you know, to my wife has always said the same thing. You know, she's like, as long as the glands is bigger, feels good. I mean, let's get rock and rolling. Right. But. I think it's important to always note that too, when it comes to pee, we're all looking to get as long as possible, but it's those four inches or three inches of the vagina that are most sensitive to, to what we're putting in essentially, right? It, it's interesting. You mentioned the nocturnal stuff. I think I listened to one of your previous podcasts where you're talking about that product. Oh, yeah. And I think that's like a multiplier 
Mm -hmm. When you said before that guys notice when they got fitter that, oh, I think I'm longer. Well, Mm -hmm. do they also notice that they're getting erect at night a lot more? Their body is naturally regulating and making sure the blood flow is working while you're sleeping. And that's Mm -hmm. something I didn't really realize once I started getting fit. It was freaking annoying. I had to like (laughs) wear better pajamas to bed so I didn't rub my dick raw. I'm like, this freaking can suck, but I understand the anatomy behind it. Like, you know, my body is just making sure that I'm ready to go. Yeah, dude. And it's it's kind of to your point, too. It, it's annoying, man, because it's like, bro, like, I don't want to feel like I'm 15 again. But <laughs> at the same time, it, it's a good it's a good PI. It's one of the physiological indicators that we should be looking for because I started hanging again. Right. And I'm just like, bro, like, yo, I'm getting like I'm getting rock hard boners all the time. And I'm just like, what's going on? But it's kind of like that new stimulus added to, you know, my pretty healthy diet and all that kind of stuff. It just helped to really ramp things up. And my biggest thing too is like, I don't want to create a reliance on supplements. Like I know l citrulline is really good. People talk about NO boosters and there's all kinds of stuff on the market that's, hey man, it's pretty good. But I think one of the best things, hey, foundational things are usually the best things and they're not very sexy, right? It's just like sleep, diet, and exercise. Yeah, and one of the things I focused on when I was doing um, high intensity training is I wanted to be able to get on the treadmill and run for a quarter mile without mouth breathing. I Mm. wanted to have enhanced breathing. I wanted to have enhanced blood flow to my lungs, all that kind of stuff where Mm. I can do tasks like that repeatedly. Well, at least for a short period of time with like, without being physically worn out and Mm -hmm. increase my stamina. And really that's, it's the same idea for your cock. If you're not pushing your cock to using it to its extreme ability, the maximum you can repeatedly throughout the week, then why would you expect it to just one time, you know, you have a one night stand once in six months, you really think your cock's going to cooperate? No, you need to be hitting that stuff every week, whether mm-hmm. if you're with a partner or with your by yourself, either way, find something that works for you so you can maintain your body. Guys talk about going to the gym, you know, four mm-hmm. times a week, five times a week. And I'm like, well, I go to the gym one time a week. I work out at home one time a week, but I work my cock out three times a week. Mm -hmm. that's what's more important to me in my life just to maintain what I have. You know, I'm not a young guy anymore. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this up, but as long as I keep at it, maybe I'll continue to go, you know, as long as I would hope for. Yeah. And I mean, to your point though, it's, I think one of the biggest things that a lot of guys neglect is the fact that you got to be conscious about maintenance. And it's one thing you mentioned earlier, you know, when you were, you found that, Hey, I'm starting to get this pain again, you were conscious of it and you made a wise decision and keeping up with the maintenance routine. And I think that's one thing that, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's neglected because a lot of us are always chasing more gains, more gains. But I think one of the biggest issues that to your point is like a lot of guys look for like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to do this like twice a week and maybe I'll get laid once every three months. And I expect to be, you know, Rambo in the sheets, but it's not going to happen if you're, if you're not really maintaining what you have properly. And that's kind of that's kind of why I always think every guy should, you know, look for something that's beneficial to your penile health. And one of the biggest things, is obviously, circulation, dieting, all that good stuff. And then on top of that, you should always do something more. I think for myself, like I use that, I have a pump and I'll use that when like as a maintenance routine, almost like let's say if I can't do anything else throughout the week, I'm like, I'll do this at least three to five times a week for at least 20 minutes before bed just for circulation you know but i gotta do something because if not i do believe that if you decondition for too long it's kind of like you're in resort back to where you were in regards to obviously losing gains but overall performance it's kind of like if you're not losing it at all there's no circulation there's no blood flow going there that may lead to atrophying over time it's kind of like the same thing that we see in diabetics um as well where i had I was talking to Dr. Brandeis about a urologist and he says the same thing. A lot of diabetics suffer in silence because they get poor to low erectile quality just because, hey, there's no circulation, right? The appendages aren't getting any circulation. If you don't take care of that over time, you know, he can. He was talking about how it can actually lead to atrophy of the penis, right? And I don't think anybody wants that. Yeah, and this is probably a good point to pivot the conversation toward. It's not just about physically maintaining yourself it's also about mentally mm-hmm. and maintaining your nerves maintaining your control one of one of the top things that guys ask me about is either they come too fast or they can't come at all and 
how does that relate to their performance? How long can they stay erect? And that's something that guys also need to practice because if you spend all this time improving your penis, but you can't use it for the amount of time you want, <laughs> then your gains, you can't really show your gains. And depending on what you want, maybe you want to be able to come fast. And that could be a guy that has trouble reaching an orgasm. They want to be able to learn one way, or they may want, may be able to learn it the opposite way. They do come too fast and they want to be able to reduce that anxiety that they feel to focus on what they're working on without having to worry about hitting climax too fast, mm -hmm. or can they climax more than one time? And that's kind of the, the alternate goal of what I've done in my life for edging. And mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of trying, instead of just doing edging for edging sake, you hear people that talk about that's their kink. They like to do that. They like to do it to their partners. For me, I'm a very, uh, goals focused guy i want to do something for a reason and mm -hmm. part of the reason i want to do for edging is because i want to understand how my body works i want to understand exactly how the orgasm works like what's happening inside my body while i'm doing this mm -hmm. and if i understand it enough while i'm in, in the middle of having sex i don't want to have to worry about all oh, crap what's going on i need to figure out what's going on in the moment <laughs> well you figure all that stuff out beforehand because you've been practicing however you prefer to practice a couple times a week then you'll be a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about it. And uh, some of the, the people that I've talked to, they have different techniques. For me, my technique that I like to do is I practice on Kegel relaxation techniques. Oh, gotcha. and there's a lot of guys, they work on Kegel strength and tightening techniques. Yeah. And, there, and it can work both ways depending on who you are, what you like, or what your anatomy is. Mm -hmm. But the guys that are like me that that like the relaxation techniques or need the relaxation techniques, they don't hear about that very often in the media or from a doctor or something like that. You hear about it with women more because women have vaginismus where they tighten up and the doctors tell them you need to learn how to relax or here's medication or tools to learn. Guys, when a guy goes to a doctor to talk about that, they may get a generic drug to chill out, but they don't realize that they're trying to, to fight the same circumstance. You've got overactive Kegel muscles. People mm -hmm. talk about your Kegel muscles are too tight. It's not particularly that a muscle is tight because it's not related to the tight ligament we were just talking about before. Yeah. The tightness in a muscle is overactivity. It's flexing more than it should. And you got a muscle that's flexing constantly. You really think you can flex a muscle for 20 minutes straight and not be sore afterwards? Or you really think you're not going to strangle your dick to death because <laughs> you've been flexing your Kegel for... I don't know, however long you're trying to do it and not mm -hmm. think, oh, well, why is my dick getting awful soft? Well, you've been choking <laughs> it out for 20 minutes. What do you think? Yeah, if you don't yeah. have if you don't have a balance of relaxing to be able to replenish your blood flow, flow supply, to be able to have a relax, uh, a strong Kegel muscle that can function when you want it to function, if you don't practice a balance between those two, then you might have problems. A hundred percent. I mean, shit, I'll give you an example that happened with me, dude. I, I, I found out about... um kegels or whatever and um so immediately i jumped into i'm like well i'm gonna do this full force and i kind of get overzealous at the time you know when i was younger and less mature <laughs> and uh I, I would try them out and i got really really overzealous with them man and i know for a fact that i was completely exhausted and i was wiped out from doing them because i was doing a wreck kegels and then i would just hold and i just try to do them for as long and as many as possible and I don't know. I had a horrible, horrible workout regimen and I didn't do any reverse kegels either. Like I was just looking to tighten this thing up to the max. Right. And this led to me giving myself basically, um, premature ejaculation, <laughs> you know, and looking back, it was the stupidest thing that I possibly could have done, but I just, you know, just had that muscle exhausted. And the, the, like the EQ was good for about 30 seconds and then I was done. Like it was the worst thing I possibly could have done in that um, in that department, and I, I lost control, and and I was just like, bro, what did I do? But then you know, as I as I started to just kind of you know take a couple of steps back, and I looked at it from a different vantage point, I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, I was just shooting myself in the foot when I'm looking to do the opposite, I'm looking to develop stamina, and now you know it's one of those things where I'm like, hey, unless you need the kegels, right, or or if you know that you know you need to tighten up. It's kind of like it's one of those things where you gotta you do have to tread with caution, but it's you know it's always best to do a little bit of at a time, not overdo it, and then just be in, in a boat that you don't want to be in, right? And that's where I put myself at. So, to your point, yeah, that over tightening is just too much, right? 
and um it's just it's just wiser to always tread with caution and know what you should be doing versus what you shouldn't be doing obviously that kind of comes a little bit of expert experimentation right and um and i just found that for myself you know doing too much too soon is probably the worst possible worst case scenario for me yeah i've had a similar experience where i went overboard on it uh and for ex just an example, I'm not sure exactly what the situation was, but I ended up doing the same thing where I was tightening too much for too long. Yeah. And you do something like that, you get a cramp and a muscle anywhere in your body, regardless of what you're doing. So I had a, a really bad cramp and it's like it tore something like mm -hmm. on one side of my pelvic floor. And it takes you a long time to overcome from tearing a muscle or injuring a muscle. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just a set of muscles like anything else in your body. You do too many bicep curls in one set and you ignore the pain and you continue to do it and you damage yourself you're going to have to deal with the pain and the dysfunction for a while until that muscle heals and repairs yeah so the, having control is just imp as important as strength and at least from my viewpoint i haven't talked to hardly anybody who actually has a weak kegel muscle because mm -hmm. I, I, I describe it as that's the muscles in the bottom of your pelvic floor that keep your insides from pouring out the bottom of your body when you cough. Mm -hmm. if, every time you cough, you're, <laughs> you're, uh, you're practicing Kegel strength. You yep. probably don't really need to do that if you don't have a problem with your intestines pouring out the bottom of your, of your body. So <laughs> instead of that, focus more on control. Are you aware of when they're tight? Like I, I'll tell guys, you're standing there washing dishes. Are you standing there with your Kegel muscle tight or is it relaxed? Yeah. And if you don't know, then while you're washing dishes, pay attention, either tighten it gently or relax it gently. Cause you need to be able to do that super easy. You're in the middle of having sex and you're like, oh crap, I've had my Kegel muscle tight for five minutes. I better relax. You don't want to have to stop and be like, hold on lady. I got to give my <laughs> dick a, a relaxation here for a moment, which is fine. You shouldn't feel guilty for wanting to take a break because, you know, you can use your, your tongue or your fingers or whatever, yeah. but it should be taking a relaxing break should be normal. You don't see athletes talking about all oh, crap. I just killed my body. I need to let's pause this competition while <laughs> I uh, take a break to recover. That should be something you should be practicing every week. Get your recovery going. A hundred percent, dude. And that's kind of the thing that, you know, going back to your point where you're talking about edging, edging for me taught me exactly what sensations it's like, OK, this is what's going on with my body now. And it's almost like, all right, cool. You know, you you learn to ride the different waves as you feel them. And the thing is, obviously, when you are, you know, having sex, it's kind of like, OK, you know what feelings you're actually feeling now. And I think that's like Mantak Chia was talking about the multi-orgasmic man. And honestly, I feel that that's kind of the thing that I've developed is that I can feel those contractions. I feel good. And then I know that my pelvic floor is relaxed and I can continue going. Right. And that's one of the things that's it's a skill that you develop over time. But the first thing you got to do is is recognize the fact that, hey, you're right. I'm standing here doing the dishes and I've been in this tight position this whole time and I haven't even realized it. And I find that like sometimes when I'll be driving too, and I'll be like a little bit stressed out, you know, where you kind of clench up just a little bit like, oh man, you know, you're making a turn or somebody's driving sketchy. And I'm like, wait a minute, like I'm all tensed up. My entire body is tensed up. And it's almost like learning to relax and breathing out and using breathing techniques as well is one of those things that I implemented into just, you know, having better sex, edging as well. Cause when you do it, when you're edging, it kind of, it translates well into when you're actually having sex, right? So that's one of the things that I use, but what is your like um, Kegel re relaxation um, workout kind of look like? Is it just, you know, you breathe in, breathe out, just kind of become conscious of it? Or is there something actively that you do like a reverse Kegel or something? So I've tried the active stuff um, using different parts of your body to, to affect what's happening with those muscles. And mm -hmm. for the most part, it doesn't really work for me. I have to just focus on what's happening to be able to feel uh, what's tightening or what's not. Uh, uh, for my description is you should be able to tighten and relax your Kegel muscle as easily as you, you make a fist with your hand. If exactly. you were, if you can't look at your hand, you know if your hand is clenched or not mm -hmm. without having to even look at it. It should be no different for your Kegel muscle. And yeah, that may take a while for you to learn. And you may have to start out learning by maybe you don't know if it's tight or not. You need to find a place where you can place a finger Mm -hmm. either on your perineum or on your cock or whatever to be able to tell which kegel muscle is contracting there's the kegel muscles that give the left and right side of your shaft hardness and then there's the kegel muscle that makes your glands in the center of your shaft makes it plump up 
-hmm. can you tell which one is active or which one is relaxed? Yeah. So uh, I had a, a, a weird example that I've given to people that maybe you'll understand. So um, the reactions of when you're having an orgasm or when you're having contractions during orgasmic type things, it's like a reflex. It's something that your body does. Mm -hmm. Now, if I told you that uh, it had to do with tonsil stones, would you think I'm crazy? <laughs> so, no. so first, do you have tonsil mm. stones? Have you ever had a tonsil stone? No, I never had in my life. I never had any issues with my tonsils, luckily. So, knock on wood. <laughs> so, for some of us who have tonsil issues, it's like a buildup of stuff in the flaps in the back of your throat. Okay. And you can either like go and have surgery to have them reduced. You can like clean them really often. You can adjust the different mouthwashes and your oral hygiene to try and reduce them. Well, as I went through trying to learn what I needed to reduce my tonsil stones, um, and I've, I've got to the point now where I don't have them. I've got like the mouthwash that works for me, like, you know, mm -hmm. that whole kind of stuff, gargling, whatever. So I've tackled that. But in the process of figuring that out, I would sometimes have to clean out my tonsil stones by using a tonsil stone kit. So, and that involves a little plastic, tiny little microscopic spoon that you would use to dislodge your tonsil stones. And both me and my wife would use this kit to clean ourselves out. It instantly removes your bad breath if you have tonsil stones. And usually you'd have to go to a dentist and have them professionally do it, but you can do it yourself. Huh. So, and what I realized is while you're using these tools, you're poking around in the back of your throat. And most of us know that you poke the right spot you've got that gag reflex instantly. Yeah. You're like, ha ah! yeah, and like yeah. you, your diaphragm <laughs> just clenches up and like you almost have your, you feel like you lose control over your body. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's happening when you have an orgasm, you're triggering something in your body. Your body is starting to do a muscle reaction in reaction to it that you don't have control of. And mm -hmm. once you realize that, Oh, it's a normal body thing. It's a reaction. Poking yourself in the back of your throat is normal. You should gag when something hits the back of your throat. That's yeah. not a big deal. But while you're working on learning to clean your tonsil stones, you got to be able to learn how to breathe, how to stay calm, feel that come over you where you feel your body's going to tense up, but you're like, yeah, nope, guess what body? I got control over this. You're yeah. not going to tighten up. I'm going to get this done, get it over with. And you're and then you can gag and do whatever after I'm done. <laughs> and that's exactly how I treated orgasmic training. I realized yeah. what's the feeling that happens when I feel my body is tense. Now when my kegels are going to start tensing up, when mm -hmm. that orgasm is going to start happening. And at least for me, like I focused on that so much that I can genuinely feel the flow of semen coming out of my prostate and when my body starts to freak out and tighten up. And when I feel that, I'm like, hey, body, you're going to chill out. Let's not freak out. It's just normal. We're not we, we're not the end of the sexual session we want now. We're just going to stay calm, ride mm -hmm. it out, and then we're going to keep going right afterwards. And that's how I learned to be multi-orgasmic. So mm -hmm. I can have as many orgasms as I want in a row before, you know, my prostate's <laughs> completely dry and I got nothing left. <laughs> as long as I maintain control and calm myself and say, I'm not going to cough. I'm not going to mm -hmm. let my dick shoot to come out. I'm just going to stay cool, relax. I'm not going to tighten up my kegel. I'm not going to lose strength in it or get a cramp. Like for a while there, when I had that yeah. first cramp and tore that muscle, I was freaking terrified for six months. I was like, crap, am I going to overdo it? Is, is this one time during sex, am I going to use my muscle too much and I'm going to be in pain for another week? Yeah. But you just got to keep doing it. You got to get used to your body, understand how it works. And hopefully you'll learn something in the process. Well, it's developing that sexual mastery, which I think is huge because I think a lot of guys just, and it's interesting too, because another conversation I had with a dude named Eric Everhart and he talked about, and it lines up perfectly with what you're talking about as well, right? He's a porn star and he told me that, you know, he had to figure out in the moment. And he said that one of the things that really stuck out to me is that he always talked about, you should have a strategy and you should treat it almost like a business. Like, and I mean, obviously, you know, we're married and we want to enjoy it. And it's like, I'm not here, you know, for business. It's Tuesday night. You want to have a good time, but it's almost like developing that strategy and developing that plan comes ahead of time. You know, you can't really figure it out in the moment on the fly if you've always kind of failed, I guess is the best way to speak about it for guys that don't last as long as they would like. And to your point, it's kind of like you had that self-discovery. You had that epiphany. You had that aha moment. And then you, you realize you could translate this into sex, right? 
and obviously getting over the trauma of like, hey, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to strain anything. You know, that's got to be difficult in, in and of itself. But, you know, getting to that multi-orgasmic -org kind of um, that level, man, like it takes time because I think when you're younger too, and this is another thing that I was reading into is how like the psychology of young boys is changing because they all watch porn and they're all basically busting their nuts in like less than three minutes, right? And that actually rewires the neurons in their, in their brain, the neural pathways, right? And unfortunately, they basically wire to like, okay, we watch porn, you're busting five minutes. And some guys can't even get hard without, you know, porn watching, right? So it's, it's one of those things where that self-mastery involves you going within. And I found that really interesting where you're like, dude, you can feel the semen coming out, you know? And it's like, all right, cool, you know, just woosah, just relax and ease into it. And it's interesting, too, because it's almost like just experiencing those different, I guess, emotions and, and different reactions from the body and just kind of riding that wave is the best way that I could describe it. Yeah, and it's a learning experience for all of us. The, it, there may be different activities that you might like. You might like baseball and I might like sports cars instead. You kind of have to try different things. And mm -hmm. one thing that most of us guys, most women as well, have in common is we have some sort of sexual drive mm -hmm. and it may we may have needs or our bodies may be unique. You got to try different things to learn it. And if you accept that it's normal to learn, it's normal to experiment and try things when you're young without focusing on the extremes. Like if I want to want to learn how to drive a race car, I'm not only going to watch Formula One and think the only thing I can do is drive a Formula One car. Well, there's a huge variation out there outside of Formula One. And once you realize that there's a variation, that's what I'm connecting Formula One with porn right now. Mm -hmm. But the, the best porn that you see that gets on that front page that people think, oh, this is reality. The only thing that's good is if you're as good as that porn star. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what it is. There's a huge breadth underneath all of the different sexuality. And if you dig a little bit deeper, into porn sites or into the porn genres, there's lots of variations. And mm -hmm. if, if anything, that's what I've tried to show with some of the videos that I've done is there are variations. You can like different things and maybe we shouldn't be so ashamed of porn and that sort of erotic visualization or uh, talking, reading that the, the porn books, novels, it's very accepted in the female society to mm -hmm. read porn a lot. I don't know if that's positive or negative, but I know that it's an accepted thing in society and it mm -hmm. should be talked about if when, pe when women are growing up, do they like that type of consumption of media? Is it healthy for them or not? Maybe there is a type of woman that it's not very healthy for them to read about all these porn novels and have false expectations. They go and actually mm -hmm. have an experience with a real guy and they're like, oh, well, this guy doesn't perform like that werewolf sexy guy from Twilight that I read about. <laughs> Ah, yeah. And that, that's taking it to an extreme, but you know, there's variations among there. You know, us guys are all different. There's all sorts of stuff. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing for women. You look at porn stars on on a on a site, all the women look exactly the same or have these particular features. They always match up the smallest woman with the largest guy. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? You're not gonna encounter that in real life. You're probably gonna have two humans that are of similar size that mm -hmm. are gonna have a relationship together and interact. How do you deal with that? What's the expectations? Yeah. Normalize a little bit of everything at any age and accept it and just don't shame you know, what other people are interested in. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I mean, the reality is it's kind of like all those false expectations were, and that's where I think a lot of young people, including myself when I was like a kid, right? You, you watch these things and you're like, Oh snap, I got to last at least 45 minutes and pound like a racehorse, you know? And then you grow up and you're like, wait a minute, that's not reality. <laughs> You know, and it's like very rarely, even in porn, do you ever see the woman orgasm, right? It's like, it's one of those things that's, you know, back when I used to, when I was younger and I'd just be like, no, it's just like, you know, you go to pound town for 35 minutes and then you bust the nut in her face and that's the way it's done, right? <laughs> Which is unfortunate, but that's kind of what you see and what unfortunately, like a lot of people just, you know, to your point, it's everybody thinks in the same way. It's a very linear approach and it's just one of those things that I guess that concept, I guess, is very male dominant. So... That's probably why it's all made and produced in that sense. But hey, you know what? To each their own. And I think we all have our own fantasies, our own proclivities. And some guys like feet. Me, not so much. But hey, if that's your thing, to each their own, right? Yeah, and I'm hoping that maybe in the next five, ten years, the the whole viewpoint of the female orgasm and focusing on that stuff may make a turn because 
that's all I hear about from guys is a lot of guys are only focused on the female pleasure. It's a lot of fun to focus on that kind it of is. stuff. Yeah. The, the next, the next chapter after you've learned to master your own pleasure is mastering, giving pleasure to someone else. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of guys love that challenge or they, they just have that drive in, in them to provide for another person. And that should be something that should be celebrated either sexually or in day-to-day -day life. You like providing for your family well, you might like providing to a wife someday. Mm -hmm. And is that a compatibility between you and a partner or that sort of thing? A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like, man, I mean, honestly, it's like, un unless she's getting off, it's like, I don't want to, you know, you feel I, I, for myself anyways, as a man, it's like, I feel like I didn't, I didn't do what I'm supposed to do here. So like, you have a job here, bro, is the way I kind of see it. Right. From my perspective, and unless, you know, she's taken care of, I mean, there's even a, a book. I remember where it's called, she comes first. Right. And it's all about that. Because honestly, it's like, I think the type of dude who just goes in there, goes to pound town, he's done in five minutes, and the woman is not satisfied, will probably not have that <laughs> woman around for very long, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's absolutely the fact. But you got to communicate either before or afterwards. Mm -hmm. Is that what she wants? There are women out there that like the couple minute thing. They feel mm -hmm. like they're an awesome woman because they can make a guy come real fast. If that's what yeah. the woman wants then can you do that? And if you go back, you remember before I said guys that take a long time to come and they want to come faster, or maybe it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. If you go into a situation, say you're at your dating and you don't know what kind of woman you're going to deal with this mm -hmm. week. What does she want? Do you know, do you have the skills to talk to her about what she wants? And then after that, do you have the physical ability to provide what she wants? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the same the way around. She should be able to do the same for you. Does she know how to please a guy? Does can she perform or do whatever it, you know, it's not a one way street guys don't own sex completely, but you should be able to communicate and talk about this kind of stuff either before or afterwards. A hundred percent, man. And that's a good, uh, it's a good note to end this podcast on brother. But honestly, this was an absolute pleasure. And I, I honestly, I want to have you on again so we can discuss more, man. Just as this is fun, dude. So I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, any closing words that you would like to add brother? No, I think that's it. That's a good point. I'll be happy to come on again. Um, if you hear anything from viewers or anyone who's listening on topics you want to hear us talk about, then absolutely let me know. I comment on stuff on Reddit all the time, mm -hmm. yeah, both female yeah. and male stuff. I hear from all types of stuff, and it's always cool to hear about. I, I feel like I hear something new every day. I don't always have the answer, but it's cool to talk about or listen to. A hundred percent. And that's kind of what, like I said before, this podcast is all about discovering different ideas. And when it comes to PE, you know, stamina, all these different things, I am a hundred percent like my mind is open to learning as much as I possibly can. I'm not dogmatic <laughs> at all. I am not religious. You know, my whole like the whole purpose of this podcast is have to have these long tail conversations and just, you know, in, in go deeper than just like one Reddit post or, or one article or whatever. So, you know, I, again, this has been an absolute blast for me and I always learn something new, man. So I'm in the same boat as you. Like, I just want to continue learning until the day I die. So. <laughs> yep. That sounds good. I look forward to talking to you again. All right, brother. All right, guys. And until the next one, we'll see you then.